Thomas Hickey. Uh, Thomas, I was mentioning it's been a while since uh, I've seen you, but in reality, uh, I and a number of uh, fans here in Seattle have seen you and your work on the NHL Network. You're now an analyst for both the Islanders and the NHL Network. Uh, I got to remember, though, you played a pretty long uh, time in the in the pro ranks and in the NHL uh, with the, the New York Islanders. But uh, welcome to our our series of uh, interviews with our alumni. Welcome back to, to Seattle via uh, this conversation. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, it's good to be back, and it's funny to hear uh, to hear all those names and guys that that sort of came after me, and most of them still having good careers. And uh, it's crazy how quick time flies by. But um, you know, it was nice that we were able to connect. And I know for me, big part of my career was was started in Seattle, growing up, and um, you know, getting used to being away from home and learning how to play hockey the right way, a professional way, and uh, always fond fond memories of Seattle. Well, I often see your, your head coach from that time, Rob Sumner. Uh, he's now with the Calgary Flames. He here does a lot of scouting, and I always tell him I'm talking to some of his former players, so I'm going to pass along that I talked to one of his better ones in Thomas Hickey. Yeah, no, tell Sums for sure. I've uh, we've, we've connected along the way as the years have gone on, and we're, we're due for, for a proper catch-up. And you look, you look at it now, I mean, not in junior, it's different, but coaches that have that longevity that Sums had, um, you know, I think – he he saw a lot of good players and, and good defensemen along the way and uh you know always good to catch up with him and glad he's still involved in the game for sure well before we uh, reminisce about your time in seattle about your your career as a professional player uh in the nhl with the, the new york islanders let's talk about what you're doing right now as i mentioned you're an analyst with the new york islanders a broadcast and we see you on nhl network from from time to time um when you stepped away from the game you know, back about what a year or two years ago, uh, did you know that this is a path you wanted to take, or did someone say, you know what, Thomas, you have uh, an ability that we think would work well, that you should take this path and and go on and uh, be an analyst on TV? Yeah, it was something I'd never really thought about uh, at all. To be honest with you, I was uh, it was just over a year ago, so I went to after spending my my whole NHL career with the Islanders, I took a PTO for a tryout in New Jersey and that didn't work out. And I'd, I, I was always friendly with the people that covered um, the Islanders through uh, MSG networks because, you know, you see them all the time, they travel with you um, and, you know, interactions with uh, interviews or um, off the ice, you'd see them so much. And I had heard that they were sort of looking to fill a role uh, and there could be some interest, but I didn't really ever think about it too seriously. And then when I got um, released from camp in New Jersey, I was going to continue playing. I was going to go overseas perhaps and, and just have one more year and enjoy it and have fun. Um, And really just, you know, I didn't, I don't think for any player it's ever fun finishing your career. And I was looking for a bit more enjoyment, you know, one final send off. And I picked up the phone and made a few calls and the position was still available. Uh, And they said, why don't you come in and, um, you know, go behind the scenes a bit, meet the people that uh, put everything together for a broadcast and talk with them and, and just sort of audition uh, for a period and see how you do. And, um, you know, I didn't know what I was walking into that day. And even, even throughout the first year, I, I thought, Hey, this is a great way to stay um, not relevant, but connected to the game. Um, you know, I think there's always a grieving period for people when they, it's been their whole life and you start a new, do something else. Maybe it's unrelated to hockey. I thought, you know what, this would be a good conduit to, you know, stay in the game, but maybe help me do something else. And after doing a full year of it, like I I love it. It's not something that I want to do for a year or two. It's something I'm passionate about and it's a fully, fully different side of it. You see the game differently. And I'm, I'm just grateful that opportunities were there to present themselves because um, you know, oftentimes it's it's timing and it's place and and the both of those fell into Ellen line for me and you know the same thing in Seattle you know you have close ties to places that you played and the fans here I spent my whole career on Long Island and in New York and uh, I think the people just want a familiar face that that they trust and um, you know I, they look at people here for not how good they were but how they played and I think there's a little bit of an appreciation there. 
um, for me and, and really just a good relationship with, uh, with the fans and, and trying to, trying to tell them what I'm seeing and try to tell them the things that maybe help me play as a player. Um, the things that I'm seeing, I can relay that to them and, and try to break it down and make a hockey expert or a really elementary hockey fan understand the same things. And uh, it's, it's been a lot more fun than I thought it would be. I'm really enjoying it. Well, I think one thing you did, it got you on social media. I have to applaud you on your discipline. You had not been on social media until you took this position, but uh, you know, your, your tweets uh, are, are excellent. You, you have insight in your tweet. So I'm guessing that's why you decided to uh, get a, a, an account on what's now X it used to be uh, Twitter and people should follow you because again, your, your, your analyst is not just on TV, but your, your, your tweet analyst is excellent as well. I, I really enjoy them. Well, thank you. I, I'm, I'm glad they, uh, they took it so seriously with us going to school when we were in Seattle. I know at the time, not everywhere took it, took it as seriously as we did. We had to get get good grades and make sure we could uh you know line things up in the classroom so we could be on the ice but i won't lie but i spell check everything through my wife and make sure that my tenses and um my grammar are correct but um yeah because it's not just it's not just islander stuff i i'm i love i'm a hockey fanatic um you know mostly at the nhl level but um i could watch any game whether it's professional or pickup i think you're always looking for things and when i'm tweeting um just trying to, once again, just as they do on television, trying to find ways to show people what surprises me, what I think is important, and not just Islanders uh, throughout the entire NHL. And that includes a lot of prospects as well that, that you guys get to see every single day. Well, let's go back to your, your time with the, the T-Birds. Go back to you know 2004 in the spring, and you were the third overall pick in the Western Hockey League draft that year. Um, I would imagine if you're going to go that high. You probably know that you're going to get picked and go somewhere. And Seattle had a high pick, but uh, do you recall who went ahead of you in that draft? There were two players who were picked ahead of you. I do. Uh, Ryan Kerr and Colton Gillies were the two guys. But hey, you know, it's so crazy because that draft, you're so young. Uh, you know, I was 14, and it, it lays a roadmap in front of you that you could potentially take, and you never know where it's going to lead. And I didn't at that time had no idea that I'd be sitting here today talking to you. But um, I remember that day I was in class. Uh, I was at school and I knew Seattle liked me. Uh, I thought there was a potential they were going to take me, but we didn't have the resources, the media, the, um, you know, the, the coverage that you have over prospects now. So I figured, you know, I think we'll be the first round. I think they'll take me, but I've got no idea. And I wasn't allowed to be, refreshing my whl.com website so i didn't know and, and someone came in one of my friends from uh from a different class knocked on the door came in and, and disturbed class in front of everyone but it was a moment moment i'll definitely always remember i remember you come up uh to play five games at the end of the season and your first goal came in your first game i believe it was at key arena yeah. um do you know which uh, teammate who has a connection to the NHL still assisted on that goal. Uh, I think it was Ryan Gibbons, right? That's correct. Ryan Gibbons now a linesman in the NHL. I it's interesting, him, you know, I see him all the time too, Tom, like, cause now I am doing <laughs> in between the benches stuff as well from hanging around the rink. Like it was always fun when uh, I'd be playing and Gibby would be the linesman, you know, cause I tell my teammates like this guy, like he's big, he can skate. Like you can imagine him pretty, pretty scary when he's forechecking you. And now, uh, still interacted with Gibby too. He was, he was, it, it was, you felt safe as a 15 year old with him flying down the wing and, and keeping an eye on you. He was, he was one of the overagers. I think one of the unfortunate things about your career is if you look at your bio, it's like, but was hurt, but got injured. Uh, and I think one of the reasons why you didn't play in the playoffs that year for Seattle after you played five games is because you had some off season uh, work done. So you didn't participate in the playoffs but do you think about that? And, uh, you know, if you look at your bio, talks about your injuries, that maybe your career, career might have gone different. It took you a while to get to the NHL because of some injuries while you were playing with, with Manchester, the L.A. Kings AHL team. Yeah, um, totally. I, I'm, I'm never a um, 
I, I'm not really a regretful person or a what if, but absolutely fair questions like that. I was 15 and I, I needed surgery and I was glad that I got to go play those five games with Seattle. Um, but yeah, I couldn't play in the playoffs because I had a, a surgery scheduled. Um, you know, again, um, I think it was my third year in Seattle all throughout the second half of the year. I had a really bad ankle issue, issue, a high ankle sprain and it needed surgery. And I had to wait till the end of the year to get that down. And it sort of set me back. And then my first year pro um, missed pretty much the whole season and who knows what could have been for sure. And I think that um, I think maybe what made me a good player, especially in junior um, is because I did take a beating. And if I look back now, it would be, hey, shy out of those hits. Don't put yourself in such a vulnerable position. Um, but I always felt like I had something to prove. Um, and then once you prove it, especially in Seattle, um, now that you've proved it, it's like, and, and then you want, you've already proven yourself, but that becomes part of your game. And I know I took a beating and I think, it took its toll on me, but that was the way I played. And I, I think as I got to the NHL and things slowed down a little bit, um, not pace wise, just where you've established yourself and want to protect yourself. Um, you know, the little things that would put myself in harm's way were also the things often that, that gave me the edge or advantage as a smaller guy, um, taking on a little bit more physicality to make sure that I could make little plays over the ice. So, Certainly part of it, what could have been, no doubt, but I felt that, um, you know, each and every injury, it, uh, you know, it's just a sign of, of what I needed to do to, to ultimately get here today or, or have the career I did. But no, no doubt, um, good health would have been, would have been a, a nice little thing to add to my career for sure. Well, look, you, you still play over 450 games in the National Hockey League. So you had, a, as we said, a, a lengthy and, and good career. And I thought it interesting, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but both your first regular season NHL goal and your first NHL Stanley Cup playoff goal were overtime game winners. So if you're going to score a first goal, that's a nice way to do it. Yeah, I did. I, you know, what's funny is that my first one in the NHL, and I look back and I was trying to think, and Tom, you might know better than me. Um, I don't think I had one in Seattle, an overtime goal, period. And and then in the NHL, I had, um, you know, I think seven total, uh, six or seven, including playoffs that were overtime. It was just strange how it happened. But those were that was like my favorite, two of my favorite moments of my entire career. Um, the first one not only because it was an overtime goal, but it was against Carey Price, who I played against in junior, um, who we all know uh, so much about what a career he's had. But um, at that point, I didn't know if I was going to be an NHL player for more than a month or a 10-game stretch. And that sort of helped me settle down and solidify things. Um, it was one of my dad's first time seeing me play live in the NHL. Uh, he was in the building. And then the the playoff one, uh, I scored in the first goal at Barkley Center, uh, first winning goal at Barkley Center uh, for the Islanders playoff-wise. And those moments just stick with you forever. I, I sort of get chills and goosebumps thinking about those little moments throughout uh, throughout a career that uh, no one could ever take away from you. They, they have a good feeling every time you think about them. I wanted to ask you, too, because uh... – a couple of years ago, you lost your brother, Dan, after a long battle with uh, brain cancer, uh, geoblastoma. And I know he was an important person in your life. I didn't get a chance to kind of officially meet him. I think I walked by him occasionally when we were you know, traveling uh, through Calgary and played up there. But uh, how that affected you uh, going forward? Yeah, uh, how it affected me and continues to affect me. Um, you know, what? like when you're when I was 16 and moved away from home to go to Seattle, uh, Dan was going to university in Nova Scotia in Eastern Canada. And we were always best friends growing up, but it was like a brotherly rivalry almost. And the moment that we both left home to go our separate ways and really couldn't be further. If you pick a spot in North America, when you're in Seattle, that's furthest away, it's going to be Nova Scotia. We were so far away and we became so close over those years. 
and it's such a terrible disease. And I was so grateful that before Dan passed, um, that we, we figured out what was going on and had, um, you know, about a year and a half to prepare and, and honestly thought that everything was, um, was good. He had a great surgery, removed everything and fully in remission, but things come back. And, um, for me professionally, that was the most difficult time of my career because not only was, um, not only was he going through that, but, uh, my career had taken a turn in the sense that I'd had a bad injury, missed a bunch of time and and really couldn't reestablish myself as a, an everyday NHL guy because I, I couldn't get the opportunity just with that hockey's a, a game, but it's also a business. And, um, I, I couldn't, get that opportunity. And for so long, I just wanted to go out and play to show him to show the ones that he loved family. Like you're looking for something that's just good, not even great in times of um, when times are extremely difficult. And I I didn't get that. And all along, it was such a motivation for me um, just practicing constantly, not even getting to play in games, but to work towards something, to make him proud. And I don't think, you know, if I didn't have that goal in mind that I really could have gotten through those difficult times. I think hockey's always, always an outlet for me. And it really, it puts things in so much perspective since he passed away. I I finally got to play after that. And I just felt um, so grateful that I was always working for something for him. Not that he cared how I did on the ice, Um, but I guess just a roundabout way of saying that, um, he had so much meaning and purpose and I looked up to him and I I just wanted to do things to put a smile on his face or take him out of some of that temporary, uh, temporarily take him out of the pain that, that he was going through, not just because he was sick, but, um, the realization that, that he wasn't going to be around. And I'm glad that I got to spend so much time with him and I was glad that I was hurt, um, during some of those times when he was really sick, because I get to go back to Calgary and prioritize um, family over hockey. And I'm grateful that I was able to do that with, with the teams that I was playing for. But um, the, the, the biggest part of me as a Thunderbird, as an NHL or of me now um, always was related to Dan for sure. And I'm glad you brought him up because uh, you know, he, he'd remember you from, just seeing him once, uh, whether it was in Calgary or visit down to Seattle, he's such an important part of my career. Well, we know how important family is, and hockey is one big family. He was certainly part of the, the family here as well uh, in your time with the, the T-Birds. Uh, before I let you go, as an analyst now, uh, you're analyzing the team you played for, and one of those guys on that team is a former T-Bird yeah. in uh, Matt Barzell. And I know you guys, I think you're in a football pool together. Who's winning? Uh, I am. I, I, I am. I think Barzi, uh, I think he's still keeping in touch with a lot of his alumni Seattle guys too. I think they've got some, some action going with fantasy football as well, but I know he's still, he's still a, a Seahawks fan at heart. So he'll, he'll tell you that, but you know, it's fun. I, I remember when Barzi came up, um, you know, when I was here and we drafted him in the first round and I'd heard a bit about him, but there was an instant connection when you both play for the same junior team. Um, and I don't want to say I took him under my wing, but, um, you know, I wanted to make sure as a, as a young guy, Seattle guy, that you look out for one another because guys do it to you along the way. And he's turned out to be such a great player. And now, you know, just starting a, a massive long contract. He's a guy you want in your dressing room. And I know from you covering him, um, full life, full energy, full confidence, and really, really lifts people up. So whenever Whenever we would see a Seattle Thunderbirds jersey in the stands at an NHL game, we'd, we'd have a good laugh and smile and uh, always always something we'll share. Same with all the other uh, alumni that you see in an NHL game or an NHL arena. Even if you cross paths for one year, maybe you were three or four years apart, you're always looking out for one another. And I think that's that's a special thing. And that's that's always what I think of when I when I see those guys. You, you, you know that they share so many good memories that you had uh, playing in Seattle. Well, Thomas, I appreciate your time uh, joining us here on our alumni series and uh, look forward to continuing to see you on the NHL Network and uh, your great analyst work there. Uh, Go forward and 